Hi, my friends. It has been weeks and weeks and weeks since we've been together, and I've missed you all so very much. So welcome to our very first online story time. It's part of our summer reading program, which is called Imagine Your Story, and it's happening at the library from now until August 1st. And you're invited to attend with me weekly online and to come in and see me because we open tomorrow for public use of the library. Uh, come and see me and pick out your books and get your summer reading packets. We do have limited hours in the youth department. So we are open Monday through Friday, 1 to 6, and Saturdays 9 to 1. That's the youth department only. Upstairs, uh, upstairs hours for adults are more extended, they're 10 to 6 and 9 to 1. Uh, but downstairs here at our youth department, Monday through Friday, 1 to 6 and Saturday 9 to 1. And I cannot wait to see all of you again. It has been very lonely. You've been so missed and so loved. But if you're ready, let's get started. My name is Miss April, if you've never met me before and you're just tuning in. I am the youth director here at Janine Hutton Public Library. This is my fifth year, I do believe, or close to fifth year since I started. Uh, these story times will be a little condensed for um, time purposes and for space purposes on the internet and on our, um, our data drives. Um, but typically in a story time, we sing hello to one another. We have a book and then a transition activity, and then another book, and then a transition activity, followed by a craft, and then a snack, and I typically read a third book during snack time. On these online um, story times, I lost my train of thought there, uh, we will just have a couple of rhymes or songs, and one book, and I'll also do a very simple craft that hopefully you will have most of the materials or, or you can find something that will substitute for it at home. So let's get started. This week we're going to talk about fairies. And I'm going to read you a book about fairies. We're going to sing a little song about fairies. And we're also going to do a little activity. So we're going to start with this. This is Five Little Fairies. Are you ready? Here we go. Five little fairies playing by the pond. One fell in and lost her wand. Mama called the wizard who did respond. No more fairies playing by the pond. Now how many do you have? Do you want to count them with me? One, two, three, four little fairies playing by the pond. One fell off and lost her wand. Mama called the wizard who did respond. No more fairies playing by the pond. Now how many do we have? One, two, three little fairies playing by the pond. One fell in and lost her wand. Mama called the wizard who did respond. No more fairies playing by the wand. Pond, sorry. Two little fairies playing by the pond. One fell in and lost her wand. Mama called the wizard who did respond. No more fairies playing by the pond. We have one little fairy left, boys and girls. One little fairy playing by the pond. She fell in and lost her wand. Mama called the wizard who did respond. No more fairies playing by the pond. Guess they shouldn't play by the pond, should they, boys and girls? Do you want to count them with me as we put them back? Here we go. One fairy, two fairy, three little fairies, four fairies, and five fairies. All right, are you ready for our book? I might have to adjust my computer so you can see just a little bit. We're going to read Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb was a tiny little boy, and fairies made clothes for him so they would fit him. So let's try it. I hope that you'll be able to see the pictures, although the words may appear backwards to you. Do you see the picture? 
Long ago, in the days of knights and giants, wizards and fairies, there lived a poor farmer and his wife. One day, a beggar came to their their humble cottage. Though they had little, they had little. The farmer and his wife were kind to everyone, and they gave the poor old man a big bowl full of fresh goat's milk and some coarse brown bread. As it happened, the beggar was none other than Merlin, the greatest of all wizards, traveling in disguise, and Merlin took the couple's kindness to heart. Wise Merlin noticed that although everything was neat and comfortable in the cottage, the farmer and his wife seemed sad. He asked them the cause of their sorrow, their sadness. They told him it was because they had no children. I long for a child, the tearful wife declared, even if the babe were no bigger than my husband's thumb. The next day, Merlin set out to visit the Queen of Fairies. The idea of such a wee little child had tickled his fancy, and in due season, the farmer and his wife were blessed with the tiniest of tiny boys. The fairies named him Tom Thumb, and dressed him in clothes only fairies could have made: an oak leaf for a hat, a tunic spun from spider web. And a jacket woven from thistle down. His pants were in the smooth were of the smoothest feathers, and his stockings were shaped from apple rind tied, with eyelashes from his mother's eyes. His shoes were of mouse skin with the soft fur on the inside. Do you see Tom? Can you see Tom? Very tiny Tom. Tom grew older, but he never grew bigger. He was a clever boy, full of jokes and games, and he loved to explore. But because he was so small, his curiosity could be very dangerous. One day, his mother was making cake, and Tom was curious to see how it was made. He climbed into the edge of the mixing bowl, but his foot slipped, and he fell right into the batter. Unseen by his mother, who poured the batter. Into the cake pan and pushed the pan into the oven. Tom's mouth was so filled with batter that he couldn't cry out. But as he felt the batter getting hotter, he kicked and struggled violently. The half-baked cake made such a noise, wiggling and jiggling in the oven, that his mother thought it was bewitched. So she flung open the oven door and found poor Tom inside. A poor peddler was passing by to pick up the pan that she'd thrown out the window, and he noticed that Tom was in the pan, and he began to holler. Tom squirmed free and made his way all the way back into the house. You know, he's very tiny. It took a long time for him to get from outside inside, where his mother washed him and gave him a bath and put him right to bed. The next day, Tom's mother tried to keep him at her side at all times, even when it was time to milk the cow in the meadow. Since the wind was strong and she feared he might be blown away, she tied poor Tom to a thistle head with one of her long hairs. She plucked a hair and she tied him straight to it, thinking this looked like a tasty morsel. The cow curled her tongue around the thistle and around Tom. So there he was, dodging cow teeth and roaring, "Mother, help! Mother, help!" As long as loud as someone the size of a thumb can roar. Before Tom's mother could even figure out where he was, the cow heard the awful noise in her throat and <coughs> coughed Tom up. His mother caught him in her apron and carried him home safe once more. Look how tiny he is! He's sitting right there inside the. Can you imagine being that little? It seemed that every day brought new perils for Tom, and this worried his poor parents. He was so little that he could easily be hurt by so many things. Tom was also sorry to add to their worries, and he often wished he could be more useful to his parents. Tom was thinking about his very problem one fine morning when he went. With his father to drive some cattle home, as he was hopping and scrambling to keep up with his dad, a bird 
swooped over him and mistook him for a frog and carried him off. They flew north over the forest to a seaside cliff. The raven, discovering at last that Tom was not a fat and tasty frog, dropped him on the battlements of a dark castle. Oh my, this is not a wee boy. Who could this be? It was the castle, Tom quickly learned, of a giant named Grumbong. Because giants can't think very well, they can be very dangerous when they're in a bad mood. But this giant never bothered anyone. The fairies had given him a special charm to keep him calm. A seashell he could put to his ear and hear the soothing sound of the ocean. No one knew the secret of the, sh the shell except the fairies. But Tom watched the giant and figured it out for himself. He felt safe and he called out as loud as he could when the giant came near. Too late, Tom remembered that although giants are brave, they are easily startled. Indeed, when the giant saw tiny Tom, he threw up his arms, accidentally breaking the string that held his shell, which fell to the ground and broke into pieces. The giant turned on Tom. Before Tom knew what was happening, the giant had picked him up, tossed him into his mouth, and swallowed him. This was Tom's worst peril yet. He kicked and struggled in, gi in the giant's insides with a frenzy. Minutes later, the giant turned green and squeamy and spit the boy out because little boys taste terrible to giants. This surely would have been the end of Tom Thumb had not a big fish, thinking he was a shrimp, rushed at him and gulped him. He's having a terrible day. Tom had a lot of time to think in the fish's belly, and he said to himself, No one is going to ever eat me again. Ever. He found a sturdy fish bone, and he made himself a sword, so that creatures would think twice before swallowing him. Days passed, and at last the fish was caught by a fisherman, who was a royal fisherman to the great King Arthur. Imagine the surprise of the servants and scullions when they cut the fine fish open and found little Tom inside. They took him at once to the king, who was delighted with the tiny boy. Things went well for Tom at first. With his quips and his games, he made the king and the queen laugh, as well as the knights and the ladies of the court. But one day, Tom was playing in the courtyard. He saw the court cook, who was always in a hurry. The cook nearly stepped on Tom because he was oh so tiny. And Tom yelled, don't squash me. Alarmed, the cook slipped, dropped the dessert he had just made for the king, and fell face first into it. Squash. The cook flew into a rage and went straight to the king. Tom has ruined your favorite dessert on purpose. The king believed the angry cook, and he put Tom in a tiny little, little imprison, imprisonment in a mouse trap. Lonely days passed, and Tom sighed loudly. What will become of my poor parents? What will become of me, he asked. And he heard somebody say, You'll be okay for a while. King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table have gone to battle. The giant is waging war against the castle for no reason. I know why, gasped Tom. It's because he doesn't have his special charm anymore. Nothing will calm him but that. We must get him another. So Tom wants to get the giant a new shell. With the help of the castle mice, Tom escaped from his prison. He led them to the nearby shore where they found the largest shell on the beach. With the aid of some rabbits and squirrels who carried the shell, Tom raced ahead on the swiftest mouse and led them all to the battlefield. They arrived at a fierce and horrible scene. The giant heaved boulders and ripped up trees. The knights were ready to stop the giant with their arrows and their bows and their swords. Tom felt useless. He didn't know how to get the shell to the giant without being trod upon by the horses. He didn't want to get stepped on or smashed by the giant's big, big feet. Finally, he took his tiny fishbone sword and he poked a small hole at the end of the shell. Then Tom and all the animals together blew into it as hard as they could. 
see all the animals in the battlefield. Mm, teeny tiny Tom. The sound that came out from the shell was deafening. All fighting on the battlefield stopped and everyone turned and stared. In the silence, Tom on his mousy steed led the shell-bearing animals straight to the feet of the giant. As soon as he saw the shell, the giant carefully picked it up and put it to his ear. His smile on his, came to his face and he said, Good shell, nice ocean, pretty sound. Then he turned and went back to his castle, quiet and happy again. The king was so grateful to Tom for ending the battle that he made Tom a knight, Sir Thomas Thumb and offered him all the gold he wanted to take back to his parents. Even a single coin was too much for Tom to carry, so the court carpenters built tiny wagons to carry his prize. Pulling the wagons were the rabbits and the squirrels and cats and mice with an honor guard of the king's favorite dogs. Tom came last riding on his mouse, a sight that brought laughter and cheers from the people as the parade marched home with Tom's treasures. See all his treasures? Geese. And so it was that Tom Thumb, in the end, helped his parents and earned his place as the smallest knight of the round table. You see that, boys and girls? No matter how little you are or how you might not feel you can do something really good and something big, you can do great big things, even tiny little boys and girls like you. All right, I have another little song about fairies to share with you, and then we're going to do our little craft, okay? So, it's called Fairies Fly. So, do you want to put up your little fairy wings? However you can fairy wing like this, you can fairy wing however you want. I'm going to fairy wing like this. Are you ready? Fairies fly. And then you sing. Fairies fly all around, all around. Fairies fly up high. Fairies fly down low, all around, all around. One more time. Ready? Fairies fly, fairies fly, all around, all around. Fairies fly up high, fairies fly down low, all around, all around. All right. Are you ready to make our craft? Let me show you what we're going to make today. It is a fairy mask. If you want to make your own sparkly fairy mask? All right, boys and girls and moms and dads and grandmas and caretakers, babysitters, here is what you're going to need. I don't know if it'll translate to you in a way that you can see it, but paper plate or white paper, scissors, paint of any color, and if you don't have paint, it's not a problem. Use crayons, markers, chalk. You could even use uh, water and drip in a little bit of food coloring and just splash it a little bit on, on the paper or uh, paper plate. Glue, glitter if you've got it. You don't have to have glitter if you don't have it. Um, drinking straw or string a ribbon to attach to your plate and some tape to use to attach it. So let's get started. I have this in multiple steps here. The first thing you're going to do is take a paper plate and fold it in half. Now this was a full size paper plate, all right, which I cut. I cut a little bit off of here and a little bit down on the side. And then I cut eye hole into it so that I could see it. And after you take your paper plate, and you can push pause at any time if you'd like to work along with me. And you have it cut and ready, and you have the eye holes cut out. Please cut out the eye holes before you move on to any kind of painting. All right, you're gonna take 
your paint. I'm using purple because I like purple and I think it's a very fairy color. But you can use whatever color you like. And you're going to take your paintbrush. If you don't have a paintbrush, then grab a cotton ball, some toilet paper, paper towel, anything that you can use to spread paint on your mask. And I'm going to just move this down. Maybe you can see it a little better. Move my glue out of the way. So, putting a little bit of paint on my brush. And I'm just going to very lightly swab over the entire mask. And I don't have to fill in. I can leave white space because it looks pretty with the white space too. All right, I have half of it done. I'm gonna go to the other side. It's a very simple craft that does not take a lot of time or very much materials. Okay, I have painted my mask. Now, you may want to let it dry just a little bit. There is my painted mask, and I'm going to set this one to the side because in the interest of time, to show you the next step, I have a dried mask already painted for you. Here is my mask that is dried completely and it's ready for step two. All right. Let it dry. On your same plate or whatever you squeeze some paint out onto, you're going to put some glue on it. Oh, and I just realized I'm missing something that I'm going to have to grab out of my cupboard very quickly. So I'm going to squirt out just some plain school, white school glue onto a plate. And you're going to need a, um, a toilet paper roll, or you can just use the glue and put it directly on the mask. I think you'll understand in just a second. Hold on one second. Here's my toilet paper roll, and I'm just gonna like make it an oval shape, okay? And I'm going to take it and dip it down into my glue so that just the edge, can you see the edge, is covered. And then I'm going to put it on my mask. So it makes sort of oval shapes on the mask. You can also just directly put the glue on the mask. Make squirrels or any kind of shape that you might want. And I'm gonna do about six of these. Okay, then after you have your glue on, this is the fun part if my friend Gentry is watching, it's glitter, Gentry, glitter. And you. Take your glitter and you sprinkle it all over the mask. And then gently pick it up and brush off the excess. And there is a sparkly fairy mask and there's one last step and I have a third mask that's made and dry. I'm using a straw as a handle on my mask but you can use anything you'd like. You can use ribbon to hold it onto your face or string and I'm just putting a piece of tape on the straw on the back of my mask. Ta-da! There's my fairy mask. What do you think, boys and girls? Isn't it fun? I think it's fun and such a simple craft to do at home. All right, before we go today, boys and girls, thank you so, so very much for joining me on my very first online story time. Just a couple reminders. The library reopens tomorrow for adults and children. 
The library hours are 10 to 6, Monday through Friday, and 9 to 1 for adults. The youth department is open 1 to 6 on Monday through Friday and 9 to 1 on Saturday. Uh, so I can't wait until you come in. It has been very lonely. You've been so missed. Summer reading has started. Imagine Your Story is the theme. It runs uh, June 22nd through August 1st. You can, uh, the ages are birth through just graduating, and you can come in, into the library and pick up a registration packet along with the first week's activity list. Uh, the weekly story times uh, will be posted probably on Mondays every week from now on for the next six weeks. So um, please come and visit your, your library. We have missed you so very much. I have so many wonderful new books to share with you, um, and I can't wait to see you. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.